Hello, dear friends. This is Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m. live. We are talking about the book Harvest of Light, which was first and originally published in Portuguese, written by the spirit author Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier. The book was written in 1972, published by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation in 1979. Prescriptions for Peace is going to be the message today. Do you remember yesterday, in the previous chapter, we were talking about how to lift up peace. Lift peace. So he quotes, saying to us that we should make ourselves essential, feel like children of God. Did you do the exercise today? Feeling yourself essential, not dispensable, that you really need to do your part for the general good. And thus, we create peace. Lots of issues, lots of turmoils in life, happen because we do not know how sacred it is our co-creation. So that's a question for us. Do you know how sacred your life is? Hmm? Sacred. How can you dispense yourself, make yourself less available, make yourself, uh, you know, as if you were not necessary. Your co-creator, yes, your co-creator. There is a creator and we are co-creators. No wonder Jesus said you're gods. So then we're learning two chapters in a row about how to lift peace up and how other prescriptions for peace. It's as if we have recipes for peace. Mm -hmm. There is even a book by Joana de Angelis through Divaldo Franco that is titled Recipes for Peace. So for us, yesterday we were said that we are children of God and we should embrace it. We recognize ourselves as faithful and valiant children of God. Today, 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 as I see friends coming in, welcome, welcome, come in, come in, because we are about to read the chapter. We're in chapter 20. Mm -hmm. It's been 21 days, and we're in chapter 20, because we studied the preface, which was a prayer for light which is essential for us. It's the proof of humility when we ask for illumination. Many people don't want to ask God anything. Well, because they feel afraid of being puppets of God. No, no, but God doesn't want any puppet. He created us as co-creators, right? So. Today, Emmanuel is going to extend this lesson on peace and give us another take on it. If we're not convinced enough that we're being called to be peacemakers, it's in our essence. So he's going to give us more. But funny enough, he begins this chapter quoting from Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. And he quotes from Jesus when Jesus said, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Hmm. Question. Welcome, Raquel. Welcome, friends who are joining us. So here we have Emmanuel giving us prescription for peace. In the assurance of our own balance, let us outline some indications of peace designed to immunize us against the influence of afflictions and tensions. 
in which we have ruined so much time in life so often. Number one, correct in yourself the deficiencies susceptible of repair and accept yourself in faults whose suppression does not yet depend on you, making your presence the best you can in the edification of happiness and progress of all. Two, tolerate the obstacles with which we are hit before the impositions of moral improvement and understand that the others also carry theirs. Three, observe offenses as portraits of offenders without drawing us the obligation to collect such cliches of shadow. Four, abolish anxieties about calamities announced for the future, which will probably never come to pass. Five, Admit the thoughts of guilt that we have acquired, but seek to extinguish the centers of imbalanced vibrations through readjustment and work. Neither despise loved ones nor harm them with the so-called overprotection, tending to enslave them to our way of being. Do not demand from the neighbor what they are not able to do yet. Ask nothing without giving of ourselves. Respect others' points of view, even when they are patent against us, convinced about how much we should be. It, it is that the views, manners, beliefs, opinions, and statements are peculiar to each person. And finally, do not ignore the crisis of the world. However, recognize that if we rebalance our own world from within by sculpting tranquility and security on a foundation of understanding and activity, discernment, and service, we will realize at once that external crises are phenomena necessary for the refinement of life so that life does not fall out of the way that the laws of the universe point to the path of perfection. It's a whole lot, isn't it? Yes, I can see friends here. Welcome, welcome. So he gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 10 prescriptions for peace. He says, he talks about balance several times, equilibrium, balance. Balance, what is balance? Hmm? It's when we get to this level, it's, it's all about moderation, we don't go to extremes. We're living in a society in which people are going to extremes, very depressed, very angry, very anxious, very sad. Everything to extreme. Avoid extremes. Let us even avoid the extreme words, never, always, because they actually don't exist. Everything in nature has a rhythm, has a pace. It's not extreme. Everything is very gradual. It's not sudden. We need, we're, we're in a moment on earth in which we'll be invited to come to the middle. Moderation to balance. So that's how he begins. He talks about afflictions and tensions. We have problems, don't we? You have problems, I have problems. Who doesn't? Who doesn't have problems? If you don't have a problem, drop me a line because I'm going to ask you to teach us how so. Because everybody has issues to resolve. 
Is that a big deal? No. To look forward to having no problem at all is not a goal. The goal is to look at these issues to be resolved as opportunities. So he says to us, if we want to be balanced, we need to immunize, that's what he says, immunize ourselves against the influence of afflictions. There are people who are afflicted. They talk to you and you get ourselves out of balance. That's not good. That's not good. We should put a limit. A limit. When we read the book Good News, Boa Nova, by Brother X or Humberto de Campos, which we've studied in the past, in that book, we become acquainted with several passages in which Jesus sees the afflictions of the very disciples, their anguishes, their sorrows. And you observe in the narration of the facts and events that Jesus doesn't go unsaddled. He doesn't go overprotect. He doesn't go and become superhero. No, 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 no. He allows time and place to come and make sure that he's going to be available when the person is ready. Like a flower. The flower has time to bloom. The chick has time to crack the egg. If we go there and spoil it, we're going to spoil a life. It's going to be premature. And that's not, not good. We can't go violent. We need to learn how to be non-violent. Gandhi. Jesus taught us the movement of non-violence. We come from lives of violence. We come from a childhood of abuse and violence. Majority of people do. And we're learning to grow out of this violence. Because sometimes the afflictions that people impose are violent. Sometimes we need to learn how to suffer without creating a commotion in people's lives. We learned it yesterday. To lift up peace, we need to learn how to suffer quietly. But not quietly to the point that we don't ask for help. But we don't create a drama. Okay, so for example, if somebody's thinking of suicide, please run for help. You're not a bother to anybody. On the contrary, you're important. Do not commit suicide. You're needed here. But sometimes we go through afflictions. It's like, for example, when you undergo a surgery, the recovery process is natural. The cells and the tissues need to reconstruct themselves. We need to gain that patience, that resilience, that endurance. And complaining is not going to add anything. So what do we do? We just learn how to deal with that pain. Knowing that inside of our brains, there is a pathway, that's what we call the descending pathway of analgesia, that is natural. And I can, through a visualization or a prayer, boost that pathway to soothe ourselves. How do I know? Science, as a neuroscientist of pain, I know. It's in the literature. And if you go to the book Heaven and Hell, 
there is the case of Claire, Claire Revere, and we have it at Cardiac Radio in our podcast. If you go to cardiacradio.com, you're going to see podcasts, and when you click on it, you see a list, and then you're going to see Heaven and Hell, and there is the case of Claire Revere under the category of expiations. And she was a little girl who went through issues as a child, very sick. She had siblings and parents, but she was so resigned to her condition. She believed in her guardian angel that the guardian angel actually soothed her pain. Right? Yes, Wagner Jr. Spiritual treatment is always a good a good way. You know, in spirit centers all around the world, especially in Brazil, they provide spiritual treatments and spiritual treatments are very good to help us. And that's the way to go. Okay, and that's a way, thank you for reminding us, Wagner, because that's a way for all of us to know that there is that resource. We treat ourselves multidimensionally. So he's talking about immunizing ourselves against the influence of afflictions and tensions. Are you immunized? Have you taken that vaccination against afflictions and tensions? Because in the world nowadays, if you turn on the news, mama mia, you don't sleep anymore. Mm-hmm. And if you talk to people and friends, oh my gosh, it seems like the it's a the end of the world, but it's not. So then he says, how do we immunize ourselves? First shot, kind, loving shot, just like a kiss. He says, number one. Correct. Make a checklist. Number one. Correct in your ourselves the deficiencies susceptible of repair. Ah, you know those faults we have in ourselves and we know they exist. And what do we do? Ah, that's the way I am. No, 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 no. That's not good. I kindly go there like a sculptor. I see that this part, this edge is rough. I go there. <laughs> Polish that rough edge. <laughs> oh, but that's how I am. No, please. You're a child of God. You're much better than that. Me too. So that's number one. And he completes. And accept the faults that we still cannot. That doesn't depend on us. Mm. Making our presence the best we can in the edification of happiness and progress for all. That is such an excellent concept of social responsibility. In this very line, it's not about the peace only for us, but Emmanuel is saying that we are socially responsible. I cannot indulge in saying, ah, this is who I am. I am an angry person. I am a grumpy person. It's a, no, no. You are polluting the air for God's sakes. Sorry, but you're polluting the air. You can't do this. Not you, friend. I'm just saying figuratively speaking. I cannot pollute the air get into people's lives and start emitting. It's my mental emissions, says Andrew Lewis in the book Mechanismos da Mediunidade. Mental emissions. And in the book The Messengers as well, when he talks about the clouds of mental bacteria that exist on the top of the city that he's volatating in. Mental emissions. And, in, and then when he asks the spirit, this is in the book, The Messengers, by André Luiz through Chico Xavier. He sees clouds and says, these are not rain clouds, right? 
What are they? And the mentor says, you're right, they are not. No, no. They are clouds of mental bacteria that are formed by the non-stop thoughts of people that are not positive. And then we see these storms in the summer season, and we're like, why? Thank God, because there's so much tension, negativity, that God is showering, literally, shower, rain showers, saying, and thunders, because they break these clusters of mental bacteria. These clusters of negative energy. Lots of thunderstorms, lots of rain showers. And people are like, oh, but it's just summer. Yeah, but that's what well, probably we need a lot of rain showers. Because we are not l learning how to think positively. So in the next 24 hours, we're being invited to think about our mental emissions to create peace. Am I polluting? You know, in the United States, they do inspection to see the emissions of the car, if the car is polluting the air or not. There will be a day, Mentor Joseph says, there will be a day on earth, but it's going to take a while, in which we are going to do the same. We're going to do the same. We're going to do exactly what happens to cars to see how socially responsible we are. Are we polluting the air of society, of our families? Vanessa, how do I know? Okay, if I always think negatively, if I'm always speaking negatively, if I am always thinking negatively, and mamma mia, it's not gonna be easy. So I need to change the game. That's the number one. Number two, checklist, huh? tolerate the obstacles with which we are hit before the impositions of more improvement and understand that the others also carry theirs. Because sometimes, sometimes, we see obstacles and we are like, well, Hey, people also have their issues. Take a plane, go to Madagascar, go to Mozambique, and we're going to see that there are people who are undergoing extreme conditions. Extreme conditions. So it's very important for us to verify if we are tolerating our obstacles Tolerating is this understanding that they are here for us to improve ourselves. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Okay, recharge yourself. And then we are asked to recharge ourselves. How? We have the virtual passes. Go for a walk. Go to the gym. Go read a good book. Listen to good music. Take a shower. You know, for mothers, usually, you don't have many options if you don't have people taking turns. So, the best way is sometimes to ask the child to watch a, a cartoon while you listen to your virtual passes. So, you recharge yourself. But it's better this way than going crazy. And hitting the child, beating up the child, or screaming and shouting, or being negative with people, right? So, so is saying, the messengers, I love this book, I need to read it again. I agree with you, me too, so that's a phenomenal book. So, number three, observe offenses as portraits of offenders. We draw without drawing us the obligation to collect such cliches of shadow. Isn't that interesting? Usually we get offended and we think it's about ourselves. P 
people mess up with us and we're like, I'm a bad person. Because I only attract the bad. But my friend, the sun needs to shine. Whether it is shining on a flower or on the mud. The sun doesn't choose. And the sun is not going to get spoiled by shining on the mud. Right? The sun doesn't stop shining because there are criminals on earth. Imagine if the sun said, oh my gosh, I keep shining. And look what people are doing to the earth. I'm not going to show up again. Tomorrow there is no sunrise. <laughs> Isn't that what many people do? They see the, 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 the replies of ad, other people. They see what people do. And instead of understanding that that's their moment, like Judas. Have you heard Jesus saying, oh my gosh, I didn't do a good job. Look at Peter. Look at all my disciples. All I've done, and look at Judas. Hmm? Look at Judas. I did something wrong. No, no. In, in that case, it was about Judas, not Jesus. And in many cases, if not all, it's about people, not us. Sometimes people have so much envy of us that no matter the good you do, they block you. Block, 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 block. And then we're distraught, like, oh my gosh, I wish, I wish. But the problem is theirs, is not ours. They are the ones who couldn't understand they're capable of this and much more. They could do much more, and they don't need to envy anything. So, for checklist, huh? for abolish anxieties about calamities announced for the future, which probably will never happen. Nowadays, we're seeing so many news. It's like tomorrow the world's going to end. Tomorrow comes, and we're still here, and we're still here. And if you see the history of humankind, it's always like this. They asked the world is going to end. It didn't end. And then it didn't end. And then it didn't end. And it's not going to end, because that's not how things go by. Four, five, admit the thoughts of guilt and extinguish the centers of imbalanced vibrations through readjustment and work. Talking about guilt, guilt happens when we actually do not want to repent. We want to become the judges of ourselves and we don't accept that we can always Try something new. The most beautiful thing is when you see a child trying something and never giving up. They keep trying and you teach them and they keep trying, they keep trying, they keep trying. The worst of it all is when they try once and they stop just because it wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be. That's not good. And that's when guilt enters in our lives because we try once didn't work like you see I'm not good at all it's my fault I am guilty and then I depress myself and I punish myself thought in life is the book by Emmanuel there is a chapter titled guilt it's vital to read that chapter again and again or listen to the program at Kardec Radio, the YouTube channel, or the Facebook page where we talk about it. So he says, admit the thoughts of guilt. I feel guilty for this, that, and the other. What do I do? Extinguish. How? Readjust and work. Readjust and work. 
There is a saying that once um, a high spirit came to Chico Xavier, his mother, Maria João de Deus, came to him and he was like, oh, mom, why, what do I do? I've been working so hard and yet people misunderstand me, she says, serve. And he keeps asking the questions about his issues and the answer is always serve more, serve more, serve more. Thank God he listened to his mama. We hope we listen to Emmanuel. We adjust ourselves and work to rid ourselves of this guilt because guilt is blocking. Divaldo Franco, in a book that is already in English and yet to be published, it's called Torments of Obsession. We have been publishing the chapters of this book in the Spiritist Magazine. You can go to spiritistmagazine.com and read the issues, you're gonna find it there. And there is this case of Evaldo, which is the case of a former politician who was supposed to be a spiritist and a politician. He was prepared in the spiritual realm. He incarnate, reincarnated in a family of uh, a spiritist family, a mother who was very loving. He was taken to the spiritist center, did the, the school of the spiritist teachings there. But then he got married, he studied, he got too busy, and like many people, they get too busy, etc. they get out. He had children, but one day, in politics, etc., he started doing wrong things and having affairs. When the wife found it out, she was so found out she was so distraught. It triggered cancer in her, and she died. Later on, he discarnated out of depression. You think this is the end of the story? No, the most dramatic part of it all comes next. When in the spiritual realm, he's rescued after some years in the lower zones, he's rescued. And they are taking him to a surgery center because he is in a cocoon, okay? He is in a cocoon, a cocoon. And then Manuel Filomeno de Miranda, who is the spirit who is, so, who is writing this book through Divaldo Franco. He asks the spirit mentor and the main surgeon, what is this cocoon made of, of his guilt? Guilt is paralyzing from the spiritual body to the physical body. I see many people with uh, disorders that people cannot understand, that science cannot understand, physicians cannot understand. And many times it's byproduct of our emotions. And guilt is the, one of the most critical ones because it paralyzes us. And they had to uh, take him to a surgical room to open the cocoon take him out and clog the emanations from his mind, giving him opportunity to renew himself. This is from the book. This is in the spiritual realm, Dona Verducci. He is in the spiritual realm, okay? This is after discarnation and uh, it's in one of the issues of the Spiritist Magazine, and we have a whole program at Kardec Radio years ago that is in our podcast list that talks about this. I will later find out and add here because I cannot recall exactly which issue of the magazine this case is reported. So, guilt is not good. Don't hide it under the carpet because it's going to explode sooner or later. It's vibratory. Andre Lewis talks about in the book Evolution in Two Worlds. 
when he was asked, how do we predispose ourselves to illnesses? And the answer, when we commit grave mistakes, and that generates guilt, creating nodules of disturbance. Nodules of disturbance. And how can we rid of ourselves of it? They say most often reincarnating. So if we are reincarnated, we still have time. Because to reincarnate is not easy. Many people say, yeah, 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 I'll do this next life. And you have to wait. Wait because you don't reincarnate alone. You are part of a social group. And for you to reincarnate, you cannot reincarnate at the wrong time with the wrong people. That doesn't happen. We're often, as we see in Andrea Louis' books, going to have to, we have to wait sometimes decades or a century to be able to reincarnate with the whole group. As we are speaking, our reincarnatory plan is being put together. Read the book, Sex and Destiny, and Life Goes On. In the book, And Life Goes On by Andrea Lewis, we see how the spirits are already designing the next life of people who are incarnated 40, 50, 60 years from the time that they are living in. That's a good question, Rudy. What part of the brain experiences guilt? I would assume that it's, a part, it's in the limbic system, but I'm not so sure if there is a particular area that is specifically mod responsible for modulating guilt. But that's something, it's homework for us. I'll take care of it. Thank you. So, he says, readjustment and work. If you are making people suffer, please readjust yourself. Be humble. Sometimes all we need is to be humble and less narcissistic. Narcissism is very detrimental because it hurts people. You are not empathetic to what people do or feel or need. And you always put yourself in the center of everything. Humanity is still very narcissistic. But there are cases that are so strong that they hurt people and they do not see how grave it is. And it is grave. We need to adjust ourselves. He says, never despise loved ones or harm them in order to overprotect them so they think like you do. People, we can be friends thinking differently, though with same ethical moral code. If people don't, we don't need to harm them. We shouldn't. That's violence. We're talking about developing this non-violent approach. That's the invitation to achieve peace, non-violence. When Emmanuel is talking about overprotection here, he's saying, do not be violent. Learn to love people in spite of their different way of being. We don't need to laugh at the same time, to eat the same food, to walk in the same way, to live under the same roof, to be good friends. That's a very high school mentality. Or better, it's preschool mentality, because in preschool, that's how they think. If you are the same color, the same shirt, the same, oh, we're best friends. And if you're not, no, you're not a good friend. Come on, we need to grow up. And I'm not saying you, we're just humanity, including me. Grow up, Fanis, grow up. 
and learn that it's okay for people to be different, though we love one another. Like Jesus, did he stop loving Judas? Ah, Vanessa, the bar is too high. No, no, he's our guide and model. The teacher of Zumba is very fit. That's not the bar too high. It's just like a good, excellent teacher. We have the best teacher ever. The guide and model, fit, beautiful, handsome, inside and out. That's Jesus. He is saying, I'm loving Judas in spite of his craziness. Because he passed. He passed. It was critical. It was dramatic. Deborah is kindly saying peace means no aggression. I agree with you. No aggression. We need to learn, right, Deborah? It's not simple. We are in such violent society yet. But deep inside, we have the power of reconciliation. Friends, the wall. One of the most renowned neuroscientists in the field of violence and reconciliation at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. He, for years, studied violence in primates. And then he studied about the power of reconciliation. It's fascinating because we learned that reconciliation is within ourselves. Some people think it's impossible, but it's not. We are built, we have an inbuilt system for reconciliation with ourselves, with one another. And, and then talking about not aggression, do not demand from the neighbor what they are not able to give. That's a hard one. Because sometimes we're seeing ahead, like, come on, come on, everybody, let's do it. They're like, really, do we need to do that? I don't see it. And then yesterday, in the previous chapter, Emmanuel tells us, tells us, peacemakers are those who take on their shoulders all the workload they can bear in supporting the good of all without demanding the cooperation of others so that the good of all prevails. It ties into that, this prescription of peace with that lifting up of peace. And then ask for nothing without giving of ourselves. Some people are like, give me, give me, give me. That's when I'm going to give you a book to read. Dodging Energy Vampire by Dr. Christine Northrup. Dodging Energy Vampire by Dr. Christine Northrup. There she talks about people just like Andra Louise in the book No Solar, ch the chapter 35 that talks about vampire. She describes the same mechanism and asks us to identify, especially if it's not us, because when we ask without giving of ourselves, we become vampires. In the book Liberation, Andre Lewis describes what a vampire is. Finally, do not ignore the crisis of the world, but recognize it and scope tranquility, security through understanding, activity, discernment, and service. We need to refine ourselves. How are you feeling, friends? This is the lesson of today. I feel more encouraged to be peaceful. Love this lesson. We feel like sweating, and that's good because this Zumba of today was really intense. It's about nonviolence. Tomorrow, when we come back, God willing, we're going to be studying what is best for us and he talks about forgiveness. He tells us about the, the very Matthew 6, 14, that we need to give, forgive others so we are forgiven as well. Shall we, friends? By Dr. Dodging Energy Vampire, by Dr. Christine Northrup.
A big hug to you and until tomorrow. God willing, friends.